Okay then, so now we know how asynchronous code generally works and how we can use callback functions which can run code after an asynchronous task is complete. Let's now turn our attention to HTTP requests, which are the things that are ultimately going to be the actions which take some time to complete in your code. So first of all, what is an HTTP request and why would you want to make one? Well, sometimes we want to show stuff on our website, which is stored in some kind of database or on another server somewhere, such as blog posts or comments, or maybe a list of songs or even user data for a profile page. Now, all of that data could be stored on another server somewhere or in your own database. So we'd make what's known as an HTTP request to reach out to that external server or that database to get that data and then do something with it. Now, when we make those requests, we can make them to what's known as an API endpoint. And these are just like URLs that a particular API or server exposes to us so that we can use them to get data from them. So for example, imagine we had a song library API like Spotify or SoundCloud. It might have an endpoint which looks something like this. So making a request to this endpoint would return us a list of Moby songs. So from our code, which runs in the browser, we would make a request to a server endpoint. Now that server would look at this request and say, okay, you want this data. So I'll send it back to you as a response. And then we get that data in our code and we can do something with it, like render it to the browser if we want to. Now there's many different APIs that we can use to get data, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, and loads more. And each API is gonna have its own set of endpoints that we make requests to for data. You could even make your own API using a server-side language such as Python, Ruby, or even JavaScript if you're using Node.js. But anyway, once we make a request to an endpoint from the browser, we typically get back a selection of data in a format called JSON. And JSON is a format which looks very much like JavaScript objects, and then we can do something with that data. So the API that we're going to be using to practice with in this chapter is the JSON placeholder API, and I'll leave this link attached to the lecture. So this is a nice, completely free service that allows us to play around with API endpoints and to get back some JSON data. Now we can see an example of this in action. If we scroll down right here, this is an endpoint. And if I click try it, then this website is going to make a request to this endpoint and show me the data down here. So I'll click that and we can see this data right here. So this looks very much like JSON data. This is the kind of data we would get back from a server. Now, likewise, I could take this endpoint and I could just place it up here and paste it and press enter. And that is going to get me the same thing. We're still making a request. It's just that this time we're directly making the request inside the browser to go and get that data. Now, if I open up the dev tools and then I go to the network tab over here, we can see if I refresh this, we're going to see this thing right here. This is the network request. And we can see some different information about the network request right here. We can see the request method is a get method. And when we want to get data from somewhere, typically that's what we do. We make a get request. We can see the request URL right here, which is what we added to the browser at the top. And if we go to the response tab over here, we can see the data that we get back. And this is JSON data. So our task will be to interact with these API endpoints like this and make HTTP requests to them from our JavaScript code so that we can receive a response and get some data back like this and then do something with it, like output it in a dynamic HTML template in the browser. So then we know what an HTTP request is now and why we'd use it to get some external data via some kind of API endpoint. So now let's see how to actually make a request from our JavaScript code. So the first thing we need to do is make a request object. So I'll create a constant and I'm going to call this request. And the way we create a request object is by saying new and then XML HTTP request. So this creates us a request object. Now this XML part represents an older data format we used to work with much before JSON arrived on the scene. But this request object can work with any kind of data now, XML, JSON, plain text, etc. 
So now we have this request object, and this is the thing that is going to be used to actually send a request from the browser. This thing is built into the JavaScript language. So now we have this request object, we can actually use it to send a request to get some data. So how do we do that? First of all, we take the request variable we just created, and now this comes loaded with different properties and methods we can use. The first method we need to use is the open method. Now this open method takes two arguments. The first argument is a string and it's the type of request we want to make. Now remember, when we get some data, we make a get request. Now there are other types of requests that we can make like post to send data or put to update, etc. There's loads of different types, but we want to get some data and for that we make a get request. So that is the first argument right there, the type of request we're making. Now, the second argument is where we want to make the request to. What is the endpoint we want to get data from? So, if we go to the JSON placeholder and scroll down a little bit, the endpoint we want is right here. This is the data we want. Now, copy all this except for the one. The one at the end gets us a single to do, but we want all of the to dos, and this URL right here will do that without the one. It will get us a list of to dos. So, copy that and head back to the code and we need this inside a string again so paste that inside there now so now we're telling our request what the type of request is and where to get that data from where to send the request to but at the minute the request isn't actually being made this is just kind of setting up the request so to actually send the request we need to say request dot send and that sends the request so if i save this now and head to the browser I'm going to go to the network panel over here and then I'm going to just refresh and we can see now if we go over here we can see this request made here. So if we click on that request we can see it's a request method of get. This is the endpoint and the response over here is all of this data. But at the minute we don't know in our code when this is complete. We don't know how to access that data. So how do we do all that? Well, in our code, we can track the progress of a request using an event listener and a specific event called ready state change. So we attach this to the request object itself. So we can say request dot add event listener and the event is called ready state change, all one word, all lowercase. So that's the event and this fires every time there's a state change in the request. Now a state change just means that the request is going through these different phases of the request and there's four in total. So what I'm going to do right here is just log those out to the console. First of all I'm going to say console.log and then the request object every time there's a state change and then I'm going to log out request dot ready state and that gets us the state that the current request is in. So if I save this, what's going to happen is we're going to set up the request, then we're going to send it, and every time there's some kind of ready state change, then it's going to log these to the console. So let me save that and come over here and come to the console, and you can see there's four in total, like I said. So each time around we get the request object, which has all of these different things on it, and up here we can see we also have the state, one, two, three, and four. But what do these actually mean? Well, to find out, we're going to head on over to the MDN guide, the Mozilla website, and we can see down here these different ready states. So we have zero, which means it's not yet been sent and open has not been called. Remember, we use open right here. Then we get ready state one when we've actually called open. So after this point right here, we're going to get ready state one. Then after we use the send method, we're going to get ready state two, which is this point. Then ready state three is when we're downloading and we've got some kind of response text. And then four is when the operation is fully complete and we've got access now to the response. So this right here, this number four, this is the most crucial step because at this point, this is when we want to take that data and do something with it. We can receive it and do something. So if we head back to these different things right here, if we open up this object and come down here, we can see this response text. And this response text contains the actual data that we receive. So over here, what I'm going to do is listen inside this event listener for the ready state changes. 
and if the ready state is equal to four, that's the point when we can do something with the response text. So what I'm gonna do is comment this thing out first of all, and then I'm gonna do a little if check. And inside here I'll say if request dot ready state is triple equals to four, then we're gonna do something. This is when we can do something with the response, the data. Not in zero, one, two, or three. We can't do it at those stages because it's not ready yet. But we can do it at this stage, so we only want to do something at stage four. And that's why we're doing this if check, because then whatever we do with it, we can do that here. So for now, all I'm gonna do is console.log and say request.response text. That's the property which contains the response data. So if I save this now, then come to the browser, we're gonna see all of this data returned to us. So we have all that now. That's really nice and it looks like a gigantic array of JavaScript objects, but this is actually JSON data. It's all really a giant string called JSON. And we'll look at how we can deal with this data later on. But for now, just know this is the data that we're getting back. So now we're sending the request and we're reacting when it's complete and we get a response and we can see that data in the console. So we're two thirds of the way there, but this isn't complete yet. To complete it fully, I wanna talk about response statuses and we'll talk about that in the next video.